to the Committee on Transportation and Home and Housing. My name is General Michelle. I am the Skid Row President, Skid Row Committee Activist, and Skid Row Leader. I want to also thank Senators Bell and Senator Blue for um, wanting to take a tour uh, throughout uh, Los Angeles in terms of uh, view, viewing the homes. I want to also be clear and say that there are two sides to every story. And so while you're only going to hear one side of the story through the perspective of the nonprofits, to understand the Skid Row residents also have a perspective. And I want to personally invite you to also take a tour of Skid Row and see Skid Row from our eyes. Um, it's unfortunate that what you're going to see is you're going to see the majority of the population of Skid Row is, is African American, more specifically black males. Um, also in Skid, Skid Row, everyone knows that Skid Row is the homeless capital of America. Um, also in Skid Row, fire station number nine is the busiest fire station in the nation. And there's not a whole lot of forest fires happening in Skid Row, obviously. So you know, there, there, there's um, environmental issues, there's public health issues, you know, but there's no sense of urgency to the point where people are dying in Skid Row. And for the, in case you don't know, Skid Row is a 50 city block that's declared by the city of Los Angeles, 3rd Street to the north, 7th Street to the south, Main Street to the west, and now Main Street to the east. That's 50 city blocks. And so um, there's a dire need for um, support, um, not only on the local level, but a state level, and ultimately on federal level. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that the, the presenters here today um, do not um, equate what our community looks like in Skid Row. You know, there's zero black uh, presenters here, zero nonprofit heads here that, that are African American. Um, instead, what was what was uh, revealed today was nothing more than the smoke and mirrors campaign. Um, because us in the, in the community, well, from our perspective, um, you know, Skid Row is 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 actually uh, in deplorable conditions to the point where you know all we're doing is we're tired of hearing the empty rhetoric. So you know the solutions that they're offering, you know, we're talking about coordinated entry systems. That's nothing more than a database. Um, you know, for the city agencies and government agencies to um, you know to declare full support for this, um, you know, it's nothing more than a database, and it's not even mandatory. It's voluntary. So what happens if homeless folks don't file it? One of our this information. And all this funding and resources will be wasted. Um, we need to come up with viable solutions that actually work. Um, you know, some of these presenters, uh, they created uh, the Home for Good project, which is actually the, the, the main uh, um, problem that created this expansive uh, backlog that is actually exploding uh, in, in regards to homelessness across our city. And here's why. Um, you know, there's been a waiting list on the SROs, because it's the only couple of houses in Skid Row. And so when Home for Good came online, you know, they claimed, you know, falsely claimed that, and they responsibly claimed that they would um, end homelessness in terms of specifically focusing on vets and chronically homeless, chronically homeless in five years, which, you know, is ludicrous at best. And so you give it our false hope to our community. Um, you know, we expect a, a, a public apology when they fail. And so what they did was they didn't put shelter in the ground to build housing. What they did was they just got some funding, you know, and just bought housing from the existing housing stock that was already in place. And so with that, they treated the backlog from the waiting list that these people are still waiting uh, to be housed. And then now they've created another solution, CES, and now people have to sign up, go from one waiting list to another waiting list. That's not the way, it's, that's not going to get it done. And so, um, you know, we talk about the homeless vets, we want to talk about citywide, you know, on the Westwood campus, there is, um, you know, all this, you know, 388 acres that are not going on towards creating a homeless housing for homeless vets. And so, you know, you know all these solutions is that we to say, well, and we really need, you know, there's a state of emergency that's been declared here and locally, you know, we need a state of emergency declared in the state. We hope that you will be our part persons to actually make that happen in Sacramento. And we also hope that you will join our state legislators in, uh, in, 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 to, in, in Los Angeles to, you know, encourage Washington, D.C. to also uh, encourage uh, to initiate a state of emergency in Washington, D.C. as well. I can go on and over, but for the sake of time, other speakers, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.